Hello and welcome to Water Child Tarot. I'm your host Sarah and welcome back. If you're a returning visitor, uh, it's great to have you here. Um, and if you're new, uh, welcome, welcome. We do have some new faces um, that have been subscribing, so thank you. Um, my name is Sarah and today we're going to talk about kind of all things fall and Halloween. Um, I did not get a chance to do a September video, um, but I didn't really have any big updates for that. Um, so since the last time I did one of these, I had put out a tarot tag called Why Tarot Tube? And the first thing I wanted to do was just say thank you to everybody who gave me positive feedback on that video, um, who played along and guessed the cards that I was showing, and tried to play guess the deck, um, and to all of those of you who did response videos. I'm going to make um, a link to the tag in the show notes below so that you can check out um, everyone's response videos. I want to say especially thank you to Julie at Piku Boo Rose for making um, a video that I really liked and as well as to Katie Flowers who didn't do a response per se but she did mention um, my original video in one of her favorites so thank you all um, for that I really appreciate it and you know it's never too late to come back to one of these uh, tags so if you haven't seen the original um, and you're interested in playing along, feel free. I will put a link to that as well in the description box below so you can check it out. And so this is a great time of year, um, you know, with the changing of the seasons and the kind of drawing in of the darkness. It's um, a great time of year to sort of reassess and um, kind of evaluate how your year has been going so far. Um, for me, it's a good time to think about goals I set out at the beginning of the year, see what's changed, um, maybe circumstances have changed, things that you can't control, and so you've had to adapt to those things. Um, but see how you're doing on the things that you set out to accomplish or to work on or to improve, um, and maybe, you know, cut some stuff back, um, either let it go because it's finished, or just say, you know, this isn't working out the way I planned, and it's not really serving me anymore, and it can go. Or maybe say, you know, this is still important and I'm just going to keep trying keep trying on it, see what I can get done by the end of the year. Or reprioritize things and say, okay, here's five things I set out to do. I'm not going to get them all done, but maybe these two are the most important and I'm going to try to finish this up before the end of the year. So it's a great time to do those things. Um, I've been kind of thinking about my card of the year a lot. Um, so if you're not familiar with the card of the year, um, Mary Greer is a person. I don't think she invented this, but she does go into great detail um, in like Tarot for Yourself, uh, which is one of her books. Um, she goes into a great deal of uh, discussion of your personal tarot card, your soul card versus your personality card, and all this kind of uh, numero numerological stuff that you can do by adding up the digits in your birth date. And something else you can do with your card of the year is to have a tarot card for each calendar year, which is also based on the month and day of your birth, but then the current year. But for 2022, um, I, I did the math two ways, and I got a, I got either the chariot or the tower, um, which would then reduce back to the chariot, right? So 16, one, and, 1 plus 6 is 7, so we're back to the chariot. So I'm a little trepidatious about next year. I, you know, I think we all are in the greater context of um, just kind of global events, and social justice and the economy and everything um, that's been going on for the past couple of years. But this year I've been extremely lucky and it's been a good year for me. It's um, brought a lot of new opportunity and to kind of fit in with that strength and the sense of like strength and perseverance, um, to be patient and to keep picking away at something um, and to not expect everything to change and happen overnight. Um, so that's been very fulfilling and I feel very lucky and now we're heading into for me anyway a potential um, Overthrow, you know or upset of that um, So I'm feeling a little trepidatious about it I'm not the tower isn't a card that I normally am like oh no because change is inevitable and you you do have to learn to roll with it throughout your life um, things just don't stay in a steady state. And it doesn't mean they always change for the worse either. Sometimes um, change can be difficult and disruptive, but it ends up putting you in a better situation in the long run. 
But so yeah, anyway, it's kind of a rambly way to say that that's been on my mind. Um, I'll keep you posted. I'm sure I'll be doing a reading about that. Um, if not this fall, then probably in December for the for the upcoming year, just to kind of see what else, uh, what other information I can glean about it. Um, so fall is obviously a time for um, leading up to Halloween. I know a lot of the, us in kind of the tarot community overlap with the pagan, uh, druid, um, kind of witchy community, and this is a huge holiday for everyone. Um, I'm probably somewhere between like dress up in a really goofy, goofy co costume and eat too much candy um, and you know, sort of take it seriously and like do a ritual and stuff. Um, I wouldn't say I have a specific ritual that I follow or a specific tradition. I don't consider myself pagan um, per se, but in the religious practice that I am um, kind of dipping my toe into, which is Buddhism, um, there are a lot of seasonal holidays like this one and the solstices and equinoxes are important. So I will probably still do some you know, assessing um, and intention setting around the 31st um, myself. And, but in the meantime, um, I wanted to say uh, thank you to Julie at Peekaboo Rose for sending me a really cool like Halloween gift box. Um, I didn't know this was a total surprise. This package showed up um, and it was funny because we had been exchanging um, congratulations on our respective wedding anniversaries on Instagram, um, Julie's is a few days before uh, mine and my partner's, and her gift actually arrived on my wedding anniversary, which was really cute. Um, so in the box, she sent this cute card. Um, I love it. And it says, have a Halloween that's fun like you and cool like you and amazing like you and unbelievably fabulous like you. So, and then she did a personal, a personal message as well, but uh, <laughs> I love cheesy cards. It's so great. Um, and I didn't want to do an unbo unboxing of this gift package on camera. I just, I don't know why. Um, I just kind of wanted to enjoy it on my own, but I will share with you the contents. Um, now, uh, the first thing I have to do um, is just say how well Julie kind of got me or understood Um <laughs> my interest. She's clearly been paying attention. So I think I've mentioned a couple times that I'm a big fan of Edward Gorey's work. Um, so he's done two decks. One is called The Helpless Doorknob. You know, you might get something like, a disguised person came to one of the side doors. Alfred returned from Novaya Zimla. So it's just these like single sentences out of a story um, and you could lay out the car, several of the cards and kind of make up a little story with it. Um, the other one is based on um, a character from one of his short stories called The Doubtful Be Guest, which is about this entity that arrives and kind of hangs out and overstays its welcome and won't go away. Um, and I am being really careful with this because it's actually a signed copy. Um, so this is the, the cover. The short story is called The Doubtful, Desk, Doubtful Guest, but this pack of cards is called The Phantod Pack. So this is basically a send up of Lenormand cards. Um, so you have this one, unnumbered one. But then you have the ladder. The child, the limb, this is like a severed mannequin leg, the yellow bird, right? So they're just objects like you would see in a sort of Lenormand deck, but then the book is like pure tongue-in-cheek you know, humor around these kind of like so-called fortune telling decks. So for example, um, each card has multiple uh, divinations um, that it gives. So for the plant, for example, represents July, 
tics, sexual indecision, impetigo, loss of intellect, misplaced confidence, writhing sickness, loose ends, palsy, assailed credit, dissolution, scandal, and worms. <laughs> so, so you were really trying to divine with this deck and then like pulled a card and read, and they're all negative like that. They're all like either disgusting or um, doom and gloom and whatever, which, which is his sense of humor, right? It's like he's known for this kind of uh, like Victorian Gothic funereal kind of vibe, um, but very tongue in cheek. Um, so yeah, yeah, he's just, he's just a goof. Um, and I don't think he took himself as seriously as other people did. But anyway, so that's the Fantog pack. Um, so the Fantog pack and the Helpless Doorknob. The Helpless Doorknob is still in print. Um, I got my copy from a major bookseller online. The, um, the Fantod pack is not, I don't think it's, it's been reprinted several times. The first two editions, I think there were multiple, um, in, in each of the first, well, in the first edition, I think they were all signed by Edward Gorey. I think in the second edition, about half of them were signed. And then, so those can be a little hard to find and a little bit pricey. Um, but the, I believe it's had at least two more printings and you will know one of the, the modern printings because it actually says the Phantom pack on the front, whereas the older printings do not have any text on the box front. So it's a quick and easy way to tell if you're looking for this. Um, anyway, I've seen copies of the Phantom pack, um, the third and fourth printings for like anywhere between like 15 and $25 on eBay. So it's around if you're, if you're curious, um, about it. So that was a long winded way to say, I'm really into Edward Gorey. I really like his stuff. I, I appreciate how his writing, um, his sense of humor kind of translates into this like spooky fortune telling kind of thing. Um, and so when Julie sent me her care package, she sent me, this, which are Edward Gorey greeting cards, um, but they're called Mysterious Messages. And so again, it's this kind of like slightly spooky vibe. That's like a gift certificate. You can return it if you don't like it. No, Julie, I love it. It's not going anywhere. Um, so let's see the little about thing in the in the stationery box says, Edward Gorey, Mysterious Messages, creator of more than 100 works from a wealth of droll, darkly hilarious books to the animated opening sequence of the PBS television series Mystery, the award-winning author and artist Edward Gorey once averred that he thought it best if we all felt uneasy most of the time because that's what the world is like. What better way to promote the, this end than to send an occasional anonymous note to, or curious card? Women will wonder, boys will be baffled. The enigmatic images on the 20 note cards contained herein will establish a suitable mood for your sphinx-like scribbles and cryptic communiques. And I had seen this um, in like stationery stores and stuff in the past, but I don't know, I just been too cheap to buy them for myself. I'm like, I like Edward Gorey. I don't know if other people do, but I fucking love this Julie. I'm so glad. And now everybody that writes to me it's gonna get like a weird response. I just, I wanna come up with like a fake return address um, or maybe a cryptic version of my real return address to put on these. Cause they're so good, look, look. They're in the garden at night. She's like handing him a note, but he's got his back turned. Um, it's just super cool. So thank you so much, Julie, these are a hit. Um, but the fun doesn't stop there because she also sent this wonderful little book. I thought um, just from feeling it, I was like, oh, maybe it's like a little, you know, notebook. Oh no, it's Edward Gray stickers of all these different characters. You've got ladies in dresses, you've got, um, he's known for like elegant evening wear from like the 1880s to the 1920s kind of fashion. Um, but then he has all kinds of like funny little creatures like this this snake actually has a little boy upside down between his jaws. Um, you know, some of his creatures sort of look like real things, but then some don't. Sort of like older illustrations you'd find in like 17 and 1600s um, books on, you know, flora and fauna from non-European places. 
um, where they didn't really know exactly what the creatures were. Like, like what's that? No, can you see that? Oh, I'm having a hard time with the with the uh, the focus on this camera. It's not automatic, so I'll have to play around the settings. But anyway, you know, it's just it's fun. So um, I I want to be that for Halloween. It's like a bird person in a fluffy costume. I would love to do that. That's so much fun. Um, anyway, uh, amazing, amazing. Here's um here's the doubtful guest character. He's this like penguin looking dude. Um, and he wears skates sometimes, and he has a gramophone. Um, anyway, yeah. I love it. It's amazing. Thank you, Julie. Um, yeah, so that's that's very cool. Oh, but that's not all. No, no, no. Uh, can't be a Halloween box. Oh, and wait, I wanted to point this out. Can we just appreciate how Julie matched her wrapping paper to the colors on this? Like... Okay, um, would it be Halloween? Got some candy. So Julie included. Um, these these are Japanese sweets, but they're they're clearly marketed for the English speaking market. There's English all over this package, so you can see watermelon gummy candies, fruity and soft. And um, they're good. I've I've tried them. Um, what's interesting to me about Japanese sweets is that they're often a lot more subtle than American candy. Um, and they'll often include more sort of depth of flavor of whatever they're supposed to mimic. So like with these, you pop one in your mouth and the first thing you get is the rind of the watermelon, which you would think would be like, oh, who would put that in a candy? Like that's the worst part. But then that goes away after about five or 10 seconds. And then you start to get this very slow, like first the light watermelon and then it just gets more and more intense, um, but they're not overly sweet. And you don't feel like all your teeth are gonna fall out after eating just one. Um, so I, I like, I appreciate that um, about Japanese candies in general and these are delicious, so thank you. I gave one to my boss um, who's into like weird and different candy too and she really liked it. Um, so that was cool. And there was one more item um, that is super cute. So this is from Witchy Woman Workshop. Uh, her name is Charlotte, and she has an Etsy shop, um, which I will link to below, but there's her, yeah, that's not going to show up, never mind. Um, I'll link to her below. Um, and it, it seems like she goes to like a Color Me Mine kind of pottery place or something and makes these, but she makes these cute cauldron teacups, they're so cute. They're little pot belly teacups, or coffee cups. Um... And I did ask her, I, I double checked, she said the glaze is, you know, completely food safe, so that's cool. Um, I guess if you needed a little, like, portable cauldron, you wouldn't be able to heat this directly. I wouldn't do that with ceramic, I would probably crack it. But you could put some stuff in there, you know, do a little, a little something. Um, at first I thought about using it as an incense burner, but I don't really need another incense burner. But um, when I went to look up more information about her, I, I noted that she also said these could be used for small plants. So I think that's what I'm gonna use mine for. It's in this beautiful kind of seafoam, greeny blue color um, and different shades of it. The camera's not really doing this justice, um, but it's absolutely gorgeous. The, the background color is kind of a mint and then it has this beautiful, um, overglaze on top that's kind of bubbly um and I think it would look it's what this is my favorite color combo in in the universe um and so I think this would look really cute in my office at work and kind of cheer the place up so thank you again Julie I love all my little treats and surprises and happy Halloween to you in terms of Halloween you know it's a tricky uh it's tricky to celebrate it in kind of a rural area where you don't have a huge community and there's not a ton of stuff going on. There's lots of activities around for children, but there's not much specifically for grown-ups to do um, around Halloween, around where I am. Um, there's a possibility of trick-or-treating going on where I work, and so I might be the person who's dressing up and handing out candy that day. Um, but the other activity that I'm uh, hoping to do, and I did this last year at my local library, was to offer tarot readings as a fundraiser for them. So um, the 
person at the library, the staff person that I work with, books 15 minute sessions and people sign up for their time ahead of time. This year I'm going to offer it the, the Saturday and Friday before Halloween on the Sunday um, for a couple of hours in the evening. And, you know, people just pop in, they get a quick like three card reading with me. If we have time, they can ask a follow up question or another question if they want to. Um, and, you know, it was fun last year. I was just kind of getting my feet under me in terms of reading for strangers. And I still haven't had a ton of experience with that. I have thought about it a lot more and kind of learned a little bit more about what people expect from a tarot reading. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be a good practice again. Um, and so the decks that I want to use for that, um, I thought I'd just show you those because, you know, people are kind of showing their, their Halloween decks this, this time of year. Um, so the first one I've shown and talked about on a couple of videos on my channel, and that's the Spirit um, Tarot Cards from Spirit of Halloween Store. Um, this goes in and out of print seasonally. It always comes back around, you know, August, September for Halloween. Um, and then I think they just, just run a batch, and then once they run out, that's it for the year. Um, the last time I checked, which was a few days ago, these were still available on their website, but it's not exactly this. It's the same art, but they've added like a, a shiny sort of translucent finish. Um, so the cards are like a little bit holographic or, or shiny or something like that. I can't quite tell exactly what the effect is. Um, and they've changed the backs. But it's the same artwork. Uh, Vera P Petruk is the name of the artist, even though she's not credited anywhere. This deck does not come with a, you know, any kind of explanatory text or anything like that to help you. Um, but it is a creature deck. It's a creature and mythology deck. And a lot of, it's a mix of um, things. So like here we have vampire and it looks like it's from one of those old like black and white you know, horror movies. Um, yeah, zombie. So it's a zombie bride. Um, but then we have alien and um, things like this warlock. Um, the queen of cups is a gorgon. So there's a lot of Greek mytholo mythology in here. Um, the inquisitors, the Spanish inquisition with the torture chamber. So it's a bit of a mishmash, um, but, and I talk about this in my, my longer video about it, but um, at first you thought you think it's like a joke deck, but it's really not. And my friend uh, Christine and I decided to sit down and actually write a little guidebook um, about for this deck to kind of help us, um, help ourselves with understanding the, the creatures um, that we weren't familiar with, the creatures and the the entities that we weren't as familiar with and sort of figure out the intention behind um, the artist's choice and why she chose that creature for that card. So we thought it would be fun to do and um, because there is no other guidebook available for this, I'm just going to make it free on my website, waterchildtarot.com. So I'll link to it in the description box below and um, you can just grab the free PDF. Um, we're not going to tell you how to read the cards or how to interpret them, but the goal, um, for example, would be to just kind of give you a little bio of where that entity comes from. This is Hanuman, so he's a, a Hindu um, deity. And so where he comes from, what culture he comes from, and then kind of a sentence or two on maybe why how that ties in with, in this case, the Knight of Wands. Um, you know, why would a genie represent the Knight of Cups? So, um, that's that. I hope it's fun. I hope it's uh, helpful, um, especially if you have this deck and, you know, you haven't spent the time to go look every, every single uh, of the 78 cards yourself. Um, this is like a little, it's like a little cheat sheet or Cliff's Notes. Um, so thank you again, Christine, for working on this project with me. It's, it's been fun and I've learned a lot. Um, 
So that's one of the decks I'm gonna offer people to use. Um, and I don't really have like the perfect Halloween deck in my collection. It's something I've kind of been keeping my eye out for. Um, and I've even watched, there's a three part series that, um, the woman who does Soul's Journey, and I'll link to her because there's like five or six other channels that use that name. Um, but she's a, a collector. She has a very large tarot collection and she recently did a three part series on autumnal and Halloween decks. I watched the whole thing. I saw a bunch of stuff that I'd never seen before and I looked and like, I don't know. None of this stuff is really for me. Um, so I'm still waiting on my perfect Halloween deck. If you have any suggestions in the comments, let me know. But I have seen like the Halloween tarot and this thing. Anyway, it's going to be um, the Trophy Della Luna will be the next one that I that I will offer people. Um, this is a Italian style Triumphy deck. Um, it's kind of based on a, um, Patrick Valenza has like a Baron von Munchausen, um, sort of, it's like fantasy, uh, but with a, with a surreal element to it. And my copy is, is one of the paradoxical ones. So it's in this like photo negative quality um, but as you can see, it's a pip deck and, um, I guess it's got kind of a, a little shop of horrors vibe to it too. Um, there's just all these kind of weird creatures and strange. So this reminds me of like Baron von Munchausen stuff, um, heavily influenced by Hieronymus Bosch, I will say. Um, so, you know, I think the, the dark blue color palette and the kind of the creepy um, aspect to it uh, makes it a nice choice for Halloween. Like, you get these, like, teeth on the plants and tentacle-y things and just stuff like that, weird creatures. So, but it's, it's also funny, you know. I, I, like, I like dark humor myself, so. Um, so that's pretty good. So... That'll be my second choice or another choice for um, doing Halloween readings. And then my third one, I mentioned Hieronymus Bosch, so I might I might offer the Hieronymus Bosch tarot. Um, this one's really weird. It's just images from Hieronymus Bosch himself. Um, he uh, created a, a series of paintings in the 1400s. And so this is that Renaissance um, kind of style, but again, weird creatures, strange goings on. Why can't I get my camera to focus? Hold them in front of my face and then I can't see what's going on. <laughs> but anyway, right? Like this is bird, bird lady on skates. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. This guy's got like a stingray helmet. <laughs> this is just a pair of ears with a knife going through, you know. So, again, I think just the, the weirdness factor alone kind of automatically puts it into the Halloween category, uh, but it might be a little too weird for some people. Yeah. Bird guy eating a dude, swallowing him whole. <laughs> I love it, but I don't know. I don't know about reading for strangers. I've I've read successfully with this for people that I know, uh, friends that I know that that chose it and and knew what it was. But anyway, we'll see. Um, and then the last one, and I'm not a hundred percent sure I'm going to use this one either. Um, is the Barbara Walker Tarot? I just recently traded this uh, with a friend I've traded with online before. So thank you. You know who you are. I really appreciate that. Um, this one is out of print in this size, which is smaller than standard tarot size. So, um, here's the Barbara Walker tarot. So here's a standard tarot card size. So you can see this, this is already smaller. Um, it has huge borders. It has text in multiple languages. And so the actual images are kind of square, which don't, lend themselves well to a tarot, like standard tarot format. 
Um, this is still available from Yes Games in a tin size, which means everything's even smaller. So that's why I wanted to trade for the slightly larger version, um, just so I could see the details in the artwork a little bit more clearly. Um, now, Barbara Walker is an interesting person. She is known very much in the knitting world, and that's how I first knew about her. Um, I have her book, Knitting from the Top Down. And it's a it's a revolutionary knitting book. Um, she, she's very much a feminist, and this knitting book is very feminist because it doesn't have standard sizing. She's all about, like, measure your yarn, knit a small piece of fabric, measure your fabric, figure out your, your ratio of stitches, um, which is called gauge, and then measure your body and, and knit this, here's how to knit this garment and put the increases and decreases in the right place to actually fit your real human body. Um, so, and she, you know, hers, hers was one of the first um, kind of series of publications in the 70s to, to do this and to provide this for people. So, um, so that's really cool. Um, she kind of bailed on, the, on her knitting public, um, her knitting fans at, at one point in her career and was just like, yeah, I'm done with knitting. I'm not going to do it anymore. Um, but she was also a visual artist and she designed this tarot deck and she drew all the, and painted all the paintings. So, um, as it, it's just, imagine, it's interesting to me the way that people's, you know, interests, not just interests, but their professional output, um, can be so varied. You know, we're, we're very much in a, in a society now where it's just like, oh, I'm a banker, I'm a lawyer, I'm a social worker, I'm a whatever and you're just kind of in that one category um most of us and to have somebody be you know to not just be interested in different things but to be commercially successful um it's really cool to see and this deck definitely is also is very feminist i would say it's it's sort of like a dark goddess deck um you might be able to kind of tell there's, you know, the, there's a lot of like, um, you know, black skies, dark skies, and just very powerful images, um, often disturbing images in this deck. But she pulls um, gods and goddesses from a variety of cultures uh, to represent particularly the, the minor cards. The majors are... I guess a bit RWS uh, and Marseille combined with her own kind of take on them. Um, you know, like this emperor is pretty traditional. He's sitting there, he's got his legs crossed, he's got his shield, you know, all those things that you would expect to see. The Hierophant with the Pope hat, the staff, the supplicants, you know. This is very a Marseille kind of lover's card with the guy and the two women and the Cupid. But then you get into the minors, and that's where Barbara brings her own, um, you know, ideas and her uh, creativity. I'm really going to have to figure out focus on this camera. He doesn't like it. Anyway. So that's, um, this is the Ace of Wands, and it's a woman, um, I guess kind of challenging this dragon-like figure that's got a wand clasped in his teeth, and he's coming up out of a volcano. Um, you know, here we have, okay, two of wands, and we have a man looking at his reflection in, um, in a pool, in a fountain of water, or, or a pool, in which he is a woman. You can see there's breasts and long hair. Um, you probably can't see, but the, the features are also different here. So, you know, sun and moon, male, female. Um, so that's really cool. The three of wands, we have the maiden mother crone triad. So, and, um, Oh, these also have uh, keywords at the top. So power, success, impasse, glory, challenge, fall, defense, oppression, for example. Um, 
yeah, it's a really cool deck. I, I will need to do a deep study and a deep dive on this at some point. Um, I, I might just read it intuitively for our Halloween readings, but I do have the giant book um, that she wrote to go along with it. This book comes with a little booklet and it kind of gives you a quick synopsis of like who's who. Um, but this one, you know, gives you much more in depth, like two pages uh, with quote, no, I'm sorry, one, two, three and a half pages with footnotes, references, two, three, four, five, six, seven pages of bibliography and like where she, where she's getting all of her quotes and information. Um, let's see all of her footnotes. So very heavily researched, very much not like just made up BS stuff. Um, oh, that's cool. I didn't even realize this book has like an insert with all the cards in full color. So each, each page has like a black and white of, of the card. So, you know, you're looking at the right thing. Um, but you know, even, even in, um, the minor. So this is the Prince of Cups Galahad. Um, she's got like a page and a half on that, you know, so lots and lots of information. Yeah, definitely worth deeper study. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's that. So this deck is, is hard to find in this size. You know, is it worth paying $180 on eBay for this? I don't think so. But that's, you know, the prices on eBay have just gotten insane lately on, on everything, not just on this deck. Um, I, I would think that a deck that originally sold for $25, even if it's out of print, shouldn't really be worth more than like 50 or something for, for a, a copy. But whatever. I don't, I don't determine these things. But this book you can get. So if you're interested in just Barbara Walker's thoughts... Or if you can't get the deck for a while, but you're interested in like maybe finding out more about it and seeing if it's something you would really want to work with, I can highly recommend the book. Um, and if you look on somewhere like Ape Books or Thrift Books or um, some of these other like discount used bookseller places, I think I picked up this copy for like three dollars plus a dollar shipping. So you can definitely still get this um, paperback, The Secrets of the Tarot, which is her um, basically her expanded guidebook to her cards. So uh, I recommend that if you're interested. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing um, for now. And that's kind of what my Halloween is potentially looking like. Um, if you would like to get a Halloween reading with me, I would be happy to, to do a few for folks, um, depending on time. And the way to do that would just be to send me an email, waterchildtarot at gmail.com. Um, that address is also in the about, uh, tab on here on YouTube and yeah, I'd love to do, do some more practice readings. It's been a, a little while, uh, since I've done one. Um, I will say that I don't do, I don't do like past life readings or like what are my ancestors telling me or that kind of stuff. I just don't feel equipped to do that kind of stuff. So, you know, if that's, if those are the kinds of answers that you're looking for, if you're, if you're trying to find out that kind of connection or information, I'm probably not the right reader for you. Um, and I just kind of put that caveat out there because a couple of, even my friends have asked me for this kind of reading and I'm like, oh, I, I wasn't expecting this kind of question. Um, but, you know, any kind of readings about the present or the near future um, or just sort of general advice, like what can I be working on or, you know, what's going on with this other person in my life, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I'd be happy to explore that with you. And um, otherwise, I just, I hope you're well. Uh, I hope you're keeping well. I hope you have something fun for Halloween planned. And you can let me know what that is in the comments below. And I will be back soon with another video. Um, I am waiting on a book in the mail um, to really dive into the Japanese uh, tarot decks. I finally got them all from Japan. Um, so to really do more research on those. Um, but in the meantime, I was gonna kind of give a, a tips and hints for finding tarot decks online, particularly um, some kind of funny things that happened in this last round of shopping that I that I was doing over the summer. So um, it's, yeah, so a few funny stories kind of came out of that and I thought I'd share those with you for a laugh. So that'll be the next video. 
uh, and then we'll get into the, the meat and potatoes of the, the Japanese tarot history stuff um, once I get my reference book. So in the meantime, again, take care, be well, and uh, thank you for being here, and I will see you soon. Bye!